Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 59 where you email me your Flat Earth questions and comments and I respond to them here. You can send them to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Let's get to it, shall we? First one is called Good Morning quite appropriate since I am doing this literally at nine o'clock in the morning. Mark, send me the second interview from coast to coast. Thanks, Lewis. And yeah, no problem at all. As you know, coast to coast is one of the few people that I actually did an interview with, which they will not, they just won't tolerate reproduction, mostly because coast to coast is a subscription site. So if you want it, you're going to have to either find it by either sign up for Coast to Coast, obviously do the, do the right thing and sign up for them, or you can send me an email and I'll just shoot you the audio recording because I've, I've got it on my side. I've got both the, um, both of them. I've done two of them. I did one in 2015 and one in 2017. So there you go. This one is called FE with two exclamation points. Mark, got to start with the next generation, the ones who don't know and want to know. Too much corruption and corrupted. We still living and people act like they know without even knowing. I deprogrammed years ago. Just know you got folks with you on this journey. And that's from Fele Wilson. Not a lot of first names do I see with an apostrophe in the middle of it. It's P-H-E apostrophe L-E, Wilson. Thank you for that. Typed from a phone. There's a lot of phones speaking there. Luckily, I know how to read that. I will never use it ever in a million years. For you, those of you who don't know, yes, you can text me, but I will never text back. I, I think that texting is an abomination. And mostly because once you do that whole back and forth thing three or four times, it's like, look, just pick up the freaking phone and call people. I'm old school. I love talking to people on the phone. I've done a, a thousands and thousands of hours of phone work. So when we went to text, it's like, really? Nothing's going to get lost in translation there? Oh, wait, it is. So you have to create an entire emoji system because the text wasn't good enough. It's like, well, between the text and the emojis, again, why don't you pick up the phone? But I know people, it's easier. It's less awkward. Whatever. Okay, this one's called Mark Sargent, some numbers for today. Hello, Mark. I have three questions for you that I hope you can answer. One, why is a flat earth easier to accept as an example of creationism than a globe? I heard some flat earth folks say that the Bible says the world is flat, but they don't provide many details. Oh, contraire. If you want details, uh, the site I'm going to point you to, especially if you're a, a strong Christian, is testingtheglobe.com by Rob Skiba. Of course, Zen Garcia's got some good stuff. Celebrate Truth's got some good stuff. There's a big Christian community in the flat earth. But the reason why is because the, the Bible appears to be, except for Isaiah 40.22, appears to be a flat earth Bible. The earth is fixed. The earth is immovable. The firmament separating the waters below above and the waters below. Um... Uh, just goes on and on and on. I mean, literally go through testingtheglobe.com. It, it covers just about every chapter or verse you can think of. Two, is there a short unified flat earth theory of gravity? No. No, there's no short thing. For me, it's pretty short though. And that is, look, it's just a, it's no different than globe gravity, really. It's just a form of molecular magnetism that are, that's pulling things straight down as opposed to a globe, which are pulling things towards the center. Doesn't get more easy than that. And people say, honestly, when people come at me and they say, what's gravity on a flat earth? I literally respond, uh, what's gravity on a globe? Because remember, your best scientists will tell you that they can only tell you what gravity does, not what it is. Number three, his last question, how do flat earthers explain circumnavigation of the planet? Wow, these are easy. You guys know this one. That is, you can run your finger in a circle around the dinner plate that does not make the dinner plate a ball, globe, or sphere. It does make it round, however. I appreciate your patience and help on this. Thank you, David Kelly. Very welcome, David. Moving on. This one's called From Cuba. Mark, are you there or your mail was closed? I have a few questions about your topics in YouTube. Can I have answers? Uh, I think I emailed this guy back and said, yes, this is my email address. It's funny. People will, uh, will leave me messages on my phone as well saying, I didn't think this was a real number. Click dial tone. It's like, really? 
And same thing with emails. It's like, I don't know. Is this a real email? They're writing this, knowing, not knowing apparently how exactly email works. And that is, if it doesn't work, it's going to come right back to you and say, this email is not valid. So if it goes out and it doesn't bounce back, chances are it went somewhere. Uh, so unless it wasn't me, now I suppose if, if there was another Mark Sergeant that took over or a military sergeant or somebody would, you know, that used that uh, abbreviation, then yeah, they might. It's like, why do you guys keep writing me? But no, that doesn't happen. It's the only email address I've ever used. Ever. Uh, this one's called, thank you, it's not easy. Mark, thank you for the good work you are doing. I became a flat earther about three months ago. I'm a little different than most. I became one not in an effort to debunk the globe, but rather to see if my suspicions about our reality were accurate. Now, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, and I've never considered myself a keen observer. About four months ago, I came across the entertaining and interesting hypothesis that we are living in a realistic computer simulation. While researching it, I came across Flat Earth and my mind was open, so I looked into it. I'd always believed in the globe, but wasn't married to the idea. I've since reconsidered my opinion in the simulation theory as well, since it requires a leap in faith to believe in the theoretical physics involved. I guess that's why Flat Earth speaks to me so loudly and clearly. It requires absolutely no leap in faith. In fact, the opposite. You can go into a flat earth, a skeptic, and leave the burden of proof on the evidence. You can then study experiments people have done and do simple experiments yourself, then repeat the experiments with the same results time and time again. Since finding FE, I have begun to read Zetetic Astronomy. I actually listen to a link to the audiobook I found a link to. I want to get the books so I can see the figures that are referred to, which is just another way to say observational astronomy. It's ironic how, before I started researching Flat Earth, I hadn't picked up a book, observed the day or night sky, or in any way attempted to educate myself in years. We sit in our classrooms, regurgitate the info, and then we're done. Most people don't have any desire to investigate, question, or research things. By the way, I know this guy starts out saying, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. These are perfect insights. You are very intelligent. And no spelling mistakes. Seriously, this is better than half the emails I got. Anything at all, let alone FE, the educational system is doing a great job getting us to accept answers without questioning how they are arrived at. Yes. Uh, getting to the last point here, being a flat earther is not easy. The ridicule, uh, the being written off by so-called friends, the constant barrage of globe propaganda and lies. I constantly get tagged in posts about the pole stars, Coriolis effect, the tides, eclipses, etc. It's become kind of entertaining, actually. Quick question to close out my first, but not last, last email to you. Do you believe our flat plane ends near the ice ring where the edge of the firmament may start? Or do you believe in the infinite plane with the infinite enclosed systems? Just curious. Thanks again, Tim Budig. Uh, yeah, Tim, as far as the last question goes, I believe <clears throat> in multiple systems, but I don't believe in an infinite plane. I believe everything that has a beginning has an end, and yeah, we may be part of a much greater system where there are a whole bunch of enclosed worlds, hence the title of my website, enclosedworld.com, but I don't think that it goes on forever. I don't. I think it's very, very big. I think it's cyclical. I don't get into like a fourth dimensional thing or anything like that. But I believe there is plenty of things to explore for a long, 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 long time afterwards. But that's a whole nother conversation for another day. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. And it's longer than just a survival guide. Uh, hi, Mark. I think what you're doing is amazing and takes heart. I believe the Earth is flat since I was a kid. I remember staring at the, at the globe and wondering how it works. Because we all fed the lies of unexplainable sciences that we are basically too dumb and couldn't possibly understand. I never bought it. I learned that it was all a lie when I was in the young astronaut program at Dick Scobie Elementary in Auburn, Washington in 1988, 1990-ish, which is interesting because I was actually in Washington hanging around in 1988, 19, I was up at Western, up in Bellingham, Washington. Uh, those of us that were part of the program had a special lunch meeting with the brother of the supposed late astronaut and a Russian cosmonaut. Anyways, after school, my sister and I talked about it because we were excited. It was a big deal to meet them. Anyhow, we knew his face from the pictures and noticed that he was identical, except for the blonde hair and spare tire. That never left my memory and things never solidified to me concerning space and the globe model. Now, I have been working at Boeing for five years, part of a specialty support team, a.k.a. Blue Streak, 
responsible for building, incorporating, and revising all the electrical systems on aircraft, directly working with the engineers, designers, and the like. I've been on in and around every aircraft we build, aside from fighter jets, enough to know how they work. I'll say without getting into details, I have no doubt the Earth is flat. Long story short, I started following you after listening to Rob Skiba for a couple years. He piqued my interest in flat Earth and the biblical perspective. Yet your flat Earth clues, along with the talk show discussions I listen to daily at work, when I find a new one, were more focused and in-depth. It's helped to use your info to illustrate to my family and friends. Thank you for all you're doing and have done. God bless you, and I wish you the best on your journey. Sincerely, John. P.S. Please send your guide and sorry for the long message. Thanks. No, no, no apologies necessary. I, I'd rather actually you did write something rather than just say survival guide. And of course, what we're talking about is the empty shelf survival guide written after Katrina when all the people that came back from Katrina didn't bother to store up any supplies at all. So I lost it and just wrote a 100 page survival guide called Empty Shelves and it's in PDF format. And you can have it for absolutely nothing free. All you have to do is email me and say, survival guide, or, or whatever you want. I want survival guide, or give me your survival guide, dickhead, whatever. I don't care. And I will just shoot it off to you. We've condensed it down to, I think, two megs, so it's really, really tiny. Uh, the Coast to Coast, by the way, the Coast to Coast interviews, I have to send through WeTransfer, because those are big. Those are raw audio files, and those are pushing 50, 60 megs. Like, like that's a big file nowadays. Uh, I, seriously, I bought like a backup thing from my, my Alienware. I think it's a two terabyte drive. Two terabytes, I think six, $69 shipped <laughs> free, free shipping through Amazon. And I mean, two terabytes, I, you know, I'm getting old. Back in the day, we used to fantasize about one terabyte drives and they used to cost like a thousand dollars. Ridiculous amount of money for a one terabyte drive. And they were huge. They're big, big drives, and um, by comparison, and now you can buy two terabytes. Yeah, two terabytes. It's not even, not even close to being the biggest. Two terabytes. Here, six, sixty-nine bucks. Comes, come, comes, shows up in your mailbox, and this tiny, it's this tiny little thing, uh, smaller than a, uh, smaller than an iPhone. You just plug it in. Doesn't you have power supply? Just plugs and powers up through USB. It's amazing. It, it's kids, kids. You don't know how good you got it. Anyway, all right, moving on. This next one's called Flat Earth Disclosure. Greetings, Mark. After giving it much, much consideration, here's how I think the powers that be might reveal the true shape of our world while minimizing the negative repercussions such disclosure would create. Place into power a president who appears to be on the solution to the new world order. In my theory, the authority ensures Trump's victory over Clinton while marginalizing and demonizing her character, thus making her the poster child for the swamp. Then they scapegoat dozens of people worldwide to be arrested, including a few key figures in order to solidify Trump's role as the world's savior. During the course of all this, they delegitimize most of the mainstream media in order to underscore the fact that we've been lied to by our own government and even the media, the ones who are supposed to be holding our leaders accountable. Once this narrative, along with whatever supporting details go with it, are firmly engrafted, in, wow, engrafted into the minds of the public, I may have to steal that one, that's a good one, they inform Trump, if he doesn't already know about the flat earth, he then informs the public that we have been lied to our entire lives by the deep state, which his administration has supposedly been dismantling since day one. In reality, the swamp draining will only be the mass incarceration of a whole bunch of wealthy nobodies and a few token key figures. This group will then become the scapegoats for the flat earth and whatever other conspiracies the authority decides to let expire. Most likely, they will decommission mission the ones that have run their course anyway. I too believe the disclosure was inevitable by picking Trump. The authority makes him the champion of the cause, thereby minimizing sub subsequent outrage from the public. Heck, even many of his enemies will change their minds. Most people will assume those being rounded up for prison were the ones responsible for all the lies and deception, including the globe earth. Trump easily wins a second term, but the powers that be, you real, oh, well, yeah, okay. Powers that be remain in power, setting their sights on 2024 and the next puppet leader who will lead the awakened masses back into full submission. Alas, disclosure brings only limited benefits. Yes, 2018 will indeed be a big year for the flat earth. It's about to become very interesting. Regards, Jeff. Well, well done. It's good. I like that. Some good plot writing there. Appreciate it. Moving on. This one's called Truth. Mark was just trying to contact you about the flat earth. Is this the right email? 
you know what? I'm going to write it back right now in case I haven't done so already. And I'll say Y E S. Yes. Exclamation point. Moving on. This one's called send survival guide. Mark, thanks for everything you do. Rick Fernandez. And yep, I will send him a guide. Remember, all you have to do is email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net. I suppose you could leave me a phone message too, but if you're going to leave a phone message, you, you better leave your email address on it. Uh, another survival guide. Hey, there's one. Hola, Mark. Thank you for your survival guide that I will be printing. Oh, this one's a response to me sending it to her. Uh, that I will be printing out and doing something very fun with, and when it is done, I will send you a photo of it. I deleted my old email and be using this one for now. The purpose of this email was a thank you and to make sure you saved to my new email. So thanks again and again. God bless you. Melanie Arison. Cool. Can't wait to see what you did with my survival guide. You know what I did initially because my, you know, I, I sent it to people and people never read it. So I printed out hard copies. I think I had like a dozen made. Send to different family members, a few friends and, you know, FedExed them off and said, okay, now you have no excuse. If something bad happens and you're still not ready for the apocalypse or whatever happened, long-term power outage, zombies, locusts, whatever, you have no excuse now. This way I can do my ultimate I told you so dance. If that happens, it's like I told you so. I'm ripping that off from Will and Grace and Scrubs, just so you know. This one's called Shadows on a Ball. I recently mailed you about my TV screensaver showing various aerial shots from locations around the world. One of these shows a city with a body of water in front of many tall building. <laughs> okay. Uh, in this picture, I'm guessing English is not his first language. Uh, in this picture, the sun is behind the city, casting shadows of the buildings onto the water. I don't know if it was filmed near sunset or during winter, but the shadows are very long. Some appear to be at least a mile. The shadows are completely straight. I don't know if my assumption is correct here, but shouldn't a mile-long shadow cast onto a ball show some kind of bend? I know on a small scale, a direct object will cast a bent shadow onto a ball. I'm sorry, I am not able to tell you what city it is, but I have attached a photo I took with my TV on my phone. And yes, thank you. And you're, and you're right. Like anything, a shadow should curve as well. Airline paths should, should bend. Chemtrail paths should bend. Everything should bend. You know, my, my favorite are airplanes. Airplanes should look like they're crashing into the ground as they, as they fly off into the distance, and they never do. Boy, I got a lot of survival. This next one, survival guide, etc. Hi, Mark. I am Ryan from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have been infatuated with the Flat Earth for about six months. Thank you for all that you do for the Flat Earth community. The deceit cannot live on forever. I do a lot of my research on long drives. I loved Flat Earth Clues and really, really enjoy Strange World. Oh, that's nice. I enjoy doing Strange World. I really, really do. It's fun. Uh, I just came across your Vegas video from October 3rd. Have you touched on the topic since? Vegas video. No, no, I haven't. And I'm going to be really careful when I touch on Vegas because, oh, I'm sorry. Let's finish up his email. This is another rabbit hole that I've been obsessed with. Whether those people died or not, the masses seem to believe so. And no one is talking about it a mere month, three months later. I think that's what bothered me the most. I could literally go on for days about this topic. Not to mention 9-11, JFK, and many other sensible conspiracies out there. I feel I am living a secret life where even my best friends and family won't buy in. Can you please send me the survival guide? Much appreciated. Stay flat and talk to you soon. Yep, I will send you the guide. And as far as the Vegas thing is concerned, yeah, it's they, they, they basically come to a point where they can, the media now can put just about any story they want. They can simulate just about any mass shooting they want. And as long as enough media cover it, that the people buy it. Remember, the majority of the population out there believe that the new everything the news uh, mainstream media says is true. And the, so the Vegas thing bugged me a lot. Let's go into this for like thirty seconds. From a ballistic standpoint, mo more than anything, they kept pushing. They keep pushing the AR-15. Why? I have no idea. Look, it's the mainstay of our military. It's you know, the M4 version of the AR-15, and. Every guy that comes home from the war or whatever war, but any, any guy that leaves the military, especially if you're in the army, is going to buy that rifle for his home because he knows everything about that rifle. That is his his best friend. So they keep it. So why you keep trying to, to crack down on it? It's never, ever, ever going to happen. It's a military contract. There's so many people making the air 15. It's about money. It's, ne it's never going to happen. My point with the Vegas thing, though, is that 
the AR-15 is not big enough to cause that much damage. It's a tiny, tiny bullet. Tiny compared to everything else. Uh, a, a quick little, if those of you who know anything about rifles, a 22 wrong rifle, 22 shoots a 40 grain bullet. The tip is only 40 grains. The initial AR-15, when it first came out, was only 50 grains, 52 grains, and I think now well, it's up to 60, something like that. It's it's tiny by comparison, to, compared to like a, a 308 uh, Winchester, otherwise known as the 762 by 51, which shoots up to 180 grains. It's way bigger. Or a 40, just a 45 caliber pistol, which is, shoots up to 240 grains. Those things are massive. We're talking multiple factor, you know, uh, you just would never, there isn't a shooter I know. That's the challenge I'm going to put it. And then I'll, I won't talk about this anymore. The challenge I put out to anyone who knows shooters, they shoot themselves. If you had to do the Vegas shooting yourself, and I'm not trying to be sinister here. If you had to do it yourself, then you're, you're a contract killer, you know, hitman style. Someone who said, oh yeah, here's a million dollars. Go tear it up. What rifle would you use? Nobody. And I mean, nobody would use an AR-15. Maybe use an AR. If I don't think they would even use it to shoot down the hallway, it just wouldn't happen. That's all he had. Apparently, it was like the whole slew of ten AR 15s. With and I'm sorry, the other thing was remember, there was supposedly what 50 something pushing 60 dead, 500 wounded. And we're talking, you know, even average statistics say that you're you're cranking through foot 1500 rounds, and yet when you looked in the hotel room floor, there you could barely even find 100 rounds. 1500 rounds, 1500 pieces of brass, rifle brass. Oh my God, you'd need a shovel to get a, that many out of there. And yet it was just oh, a few little smatterings of shells. Where the heck were it? Uh, I could go on and on. Let's not talk about Vegas. Uh, it just bugs me. Just don't buy it. Where, where they say, look, just not enough gun. Anyone ask you, just look. Air 15, not enough gun. 762. That's what you'd use. Or Barrett. Anything. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, let's let's end that one. Sorry. I go off. There's some, certain things I'm I'm pretty passionate about. That's one of. Them. I mean, you can ask me about any conspiracy. I've got an opinion on pretty much all of them, but that one just bugged me. It was just sloppy, sloppy work. Okay, this one's called Death Threat Apology Number Two Plus Correction. Not making that up. Literally, that's what the title is. Death Threat Apology Number Two Plus. That's an awesome. That's probably the best title I've ever had for an email. Hey, Mark, just want to give my deepest apologies again about the disgraceful email I sent when I was under the influence. Also, after your most recent email show, I'd like to correct you when you said I was on crack. Glass is actually slang for meth, <laughs> not crack. <laughs> and he actually spelled out methamphetamine, which I didn't know how to spell until now. Just so you know, it was my sixth day without any sleep at the time when I sent the email, so my mind was clearly fried. I have no real hatred in my heart for you, and I hope you can somehow forgive me. Life is short. Irving Kinius. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's such a great email. Normally, I'd, I'd end on an email like that, but that's awesome. It's like, so let me sum summarize this or reword this email. I'm sorry I sent you the death threat, but when you when you read my death threat on air and you said I was on crack because I was said I was hitting the glass, I wasn't actually doing crack. I was doing meth. So sorry. Okay, you know what? The fact that you emailed and gave me the correction, awesome. That's really great. Seriously, hugs not drugs. The fact that you're doing meth and not sleeping for six days, come on, man. Better life choices. Make good decisions. Or try. Okay, moving on. Wow. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, thanks for all your efforts. I would certainly appreciate your survival guide. Thanks. Joe Guerino. G-U-E-R-I-N-O. Guerino. Guerino. Yep. You got it, Joe. Send it your way. You know, the more times I mention the guide, I think more people just keep emailing me and say, hey, what about that guide? People don't like to miss out, especially if I said, like, there's only 10 left, which is impossible because it's digital, right? All right, this one's called Flat Earth. Mark, you said it's the edge of the earth. I'm wondering if there's more past that point, another world with another life. What is the light in the night sky they say are satellites? Could be, could it be another life form going from one end to another of Antarctica, but have to cross us to get to it? Sure. 
Sure, absolutely. That is one of the big questions, which is what what's flying around up there? And I see it with night vision binoculars every chance I get, which is what's up there? Are they in here with us or can they move from one enclosed world to another? That's uh, one of the big questions. Uh, if you want to look up some related things to that, look at the 1561 Nuremberg event that happened in Nuremberg, Germany in the year 1561. Fascinating stuff. Read the whole thing. It's in Wiki. This one's called Flat Earth Challenge, Topeka, Kansas. Mark, for the past few months, I have been wanting to approach my local college in Topeka, Kansas, Washburn University, and ask how to set up a debate or discussion on Flat Earth. For whatever reason, I hadn't acted. Then this morning, I opened your YouTube video, Still More Flat Earth Mailbag, Strange World 133, before work and heard you state your Flat Earth Challenge and that you're at war with mainstream education. Well, that inspired me so much, I literally drove down to the university and shot everyone. No, that's not what he said. And walked in unannounced to the physics and astronomy department and asked to talk with a professor. I was successful in meeting with a PhD professor for about an hour. For now, I'll keep the name of the professor and details private so I can accomplish my goal in having a debate or discussion sometime in 2018. That is my goal. Hopefully, I am successful and able to fly you in to the heart of America. Thank you, Mark Earl McIntosh from Topeka, Kansas. And I have been to Kansas. I've been to just about every state when I used to do business travel, installing proprietary time and attendance software all over the place. Places you'd never go to on vacation. I went. In fact, out of all the states and I have not been to have been to Alaska and Hawaii and a lot of people haven't. Uh but I haven't been to like a couple in the northeast. So I'd say like 40 44 states, 40 45 states maybe. 44. Something like that. Anyway, thanks for that. Uh, hopefully we can get more debates. And if you're curious about my, my flat earth war with science, you just type that into YouTube. You'll, you'll see my declaration where I am willing to go out and talk to any university panel or any academic panel. I don't care. The five on one, six on one, 10 on one. Bring it. Uh, at this point, I, I'm taking the fight to them. All you have to do is fly me in and take care of my hotel. That's it. I don't care where, where it is. But hurry because my schedule is starting to fill up for this year this one's called flat earth info mark i listened to a lot of your programs and my hat is off to you you're an excellent presenter i had a lot of time in the f4 oh really f4 as a wso and was always too busy to notice that i did not need to adjust the adi every so often f4 is a plane by the way military to compensate for the curvature of the earth among other things the gyroscope is what convinced me of your basic premise in the fe but my real reason for this email is like a like a copy of the throne of god that one of your shows discussed thank you ron ps keep up the good work and i don't know if i sent that to him so i'll put that in my little to-do pile and I will get back to him on that. Send him the Throne of God. The Throne of God paper was, uh, I didn't write it. It was uh, done by an air traffic controller who was talking to a flight instructor on one of my Strange World shows. And he said they wrote this big thing called Throne of God. It's not light reading, but if you want a copy, you can just say, hey, send me that Throne of God thing. And this next one's called, and I'll go figure, I would like your survival guide. Mark, I hope to meet you one day and appreciate all you do from the heart of the Ozarks here in Missouri. Thanks again, John. Very welcome. Sent that to him. And as far as the Ozarks, the Ozarks is a um, also a television show, kind of a dark, not even a dark comedy, dark drama. Uh, interesting about a guy who launders money for the the mob, and has to go down to the Ozarks to save his life. And it's uh, interesting with Jason Bateman. Bateman, good series. Well done by by Jason. I think he's also a producer. I don't know if he directed any of you. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I saw your video and I believe you. I've been seeking the truth on many things for a couple years now, like who really runs the world behind the scene, i.e. bankers, and poisons us through our water and food supply. I'm just now stumbling across your video, learning about our flat earth. I want to know the whole truth about everything. I do believe in Jesus, the Savior, and the Bible. Please feel, tell me everything that's a lie and the whole truth about everything, like aliens, other planets, if any, are our upcoming future their plans if you can thanks for your efforts with much love doreen horton and hopefully you know what i'm going to send doreen since she's mentioning the christian stuff i'm going to send her a link to testingtheglobe.com that great website produced by rob skiba 
This one's called What Happens When the Truth Comes Out? Mark, in the Flat Earth Clues, you suggest that the designers have intentionally hidden us from us, the artificial nature of our world, because if we knew there was a barrier, we wouldn't be content until we'd broken through it. You also say that an earlier civilization was destroyed for exactly, exactly this reason. They discovered that they were in the enclosure and tried to escape. Couldn't the same thing happen to us when the world wakes up to the truth about Flat Earth? Yeah, possibly. Sure. But I, we're not nearly as capable or, I, or honestly as arrogant as the, that, that civilization. Won't the creators simply hit the reset button and start again? I'm hoping not. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So I'm betting no. I bet you we can turn this into something cool. I do. This one's called New Flat Earth Website DomeRadio.com Hey Mark, that would save me some time for sure. That would be great. I started on some of the Strange World episodes. Would like to upload the Flat Earth Clues interviews as well. I like the personal interviews because it makes it more real for me. Most of the teaching experiment videos rely on the visuals anyways. Yours the best. Thanks, Jason. And yeah, I think he's still building it. Uh, check it out. I don't know if it's still up. I haven't checked in a little while. Uh, but if he emails me back, I'll send him more things. It's at domeradio.com. People are making new stuff all the time. I don't mind endorsing all stuff. I, you don't have to pay me. But if you're Doritos, yeah, you would have to pay me. Uh, idea for a new clue. Mark, talk about how movies have made us think that NASA is the best thing since sliced bread. Movies like The Right Stuff, which makes us think that they, every astronaut has what it takes, but like Independence Day, where Will Smith is a hotshot pilot, couldn't make it in. Hmm. Hmm. Good one. Yeah, good point. Yeah, NASA. You got to be, you got to pretty much be Air Force to get in. And then you have to sign a whole bunch of disclosure agreements so that you don't talk about it because it's a secret. This is me doing ASMR, <laughs> which is stupid because ASMR is a horrible acronym. It's just called the tingles. Really, that's it. It starts in your you know, back of your head, your scalp, and affects people differently and mostly it's 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 activated by whispering but other people do that cheating thing where they do it finger tapping and tapping your nails on things and and crap like that uh, sorry just talk it's the easiest way just read something all right here we go tides both shuttle crashes mark thanks for all you do why if both shuttles crashed astronauts weren't dead the msm won't cover this where is flight 370? Is that a hoax? Thanks, Dave from Indiana. And yeah, the mainstream, you got to have to take anything the mainstream says with a grain of salt. I hate to say this, but the mainstream has, has been bought and paid for a long, long time ago. And that is every story that's on there has some sort of ulterior motive. Every story is released for a reason. Plain and simple. It, it started a long time ago. It, I'll give you the logic behind it real quick. Which is back in the day, some some years ago, newspapers used to come after the wealthy. They used to be able to attack them. And, it, and then all of a sudden it occurred to them. It's like, wait, let's say I'm a billionaire and I've got a newspaper coming after me, the Washington Post, right? Coming after me, coming after me. And then all of a sudden one of my rich friends is like, man, the only way you're going to stop them from coming after you is you just buy that newspaper outright. <laughs> it's like and then you get this weird awkward silence like hey that that idea is just crazy enough to work and then they share it with each other and it's like then you just buy up all the media outlets or influence them so heavily and pay for you know you if you can't buy them outright as a corporation you make sure that you have nothing but your producers in there and that's it and then you can control the news you released of course you know some stories write themselves but the other stuff you want to push it you can't the the early, the the one that couldn't have been more obvious was when Big Pharma was pushing the stories all over the major networks about it's like, oh, yeah, people that, that don't have their children take vaccines are irresponsible and, and vaccinations are absolutely 100 percent safe and all this all this sort of stuff. And it was push, being pushed so hard for all, simultaneously across the networks. It's like because Big Pharma has that sort of money, you can buy, basically buy the news if you want. 
you get, we see it every day with with certain things. And eh, I don't want to get into it. You know what I mean, though, right? This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, I should have done this a long time ago. Better late than never. Thanks, Mark. That's from JB. Yes, better late than never. It's never too late. As long as you can get the Survival Guide before the apocalypse, well, then you're good. If you had it for two years and didn't use it, I was, you know, my one of my sayings is better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So if you want the survival guide, I, I know I should probably put a place out there where you can download, but I don't mind. It, it takes me two seconds to shoot it off to people. But eventually, maybe I'll I'll put it in, like put it at enclosedworld.com where you can just download it. But this way, I know you have it. But the key thing is when you get it printed out. You have it. It's like, great, I got the survival guide. And then the power goes out. It's like, great, I can't read my survival guide because it's digital and I need a power supply. Well, my phone still works for a while. It's like, really? So you're just going to keep going to your car, keep charging your phone. It's like, wait, what did it say about how to take care of zombies? I don't really have a chapter on zombies. I'm just saying that it's better to have a hard copy. That way you can take it with you when you run. This one's called Flat Earth Garbage. Ooh, a troll letter. Let's read it. Mr. Sergeant, I am a globe believer and a Christian believer in the scriptures. I have listened to your Flat Earth script and I am totally certain that you are a shill or nut. Below is a list of your nonsense. One, we live in an enclosed snow globe and not one bit of evidence because there is none. Two, the planets and stars are projected on the dome like a planetarium. Not one bit of evidence or conjecture because there is none. This one shows your lunacy, and by that I mean you're nuts, sir. Three, your nonsense and not one explanation on how the sun and the moon exist on a flat earth because there is none. Boy, that's his favorite thing. There is none. Uh, four, your BS on southern hemisphere plane routes that absolutely exist. Yes, there are routes for the pilot's use. Five, your lies on Admiral Byrd, who at no time ever stated anything on ice walls, domes, or flat earth. You use this good man to further your lies. How, <laughs> I should ad lib here. How dare you, sir? How dare you sully the name of an admiral? What are we in, like 1930? Uh, six, you are affecting folks who are buying into your garbage and will have negative consequences on their lives. You have no shame, sir. <laughs> wow. Seven, you don't debate anyone with half a brain. <laughs> That's his last one. I'd love to debate people with half a brain or more. I'm not going to put the challenge out there. I can't get anyone to debate me at this point. And of course, now, you know, my standards, I've raised the bar to where, look, you got to have a master's degree in physical science. Bring it. Bring your academic ass in. Bring your friends. Have whole university come against me. Put me up on stage uh, against a, a panel at Yale or Harvard and come at me with whatever you got. Will not end well. Oh, I mean, the audience may like it, but remember, that's a whole bunch of students that are being indoctrinated. But I bet you I'll get to some of them. I bet you. Anyway, thank you for the troll letter. Uh, this one's called Salem Meet Up Update. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I think that sucker already happened. Yep, January 27th, so we won't go into that. If you guys, But I will remind people, if you're uh, doing a meetup uh, and you want me to promo it, all you have to do is pick the venue. Just tell me where it's going to be, what time it's going to be, and how to get a hold of your contact info. And I've got the templates. I've done so many meetup promos that I'll 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 just put it up there. So I'll be like Flat Earth you know, Meetup Toronto, Flat Earth Meetup Phoenix, Jacksonville, whatever it is. In fact, I'm going to be doing one. I'm going to be making a personal appearance. Down with with Bob from Globebusters, as far as I know, down at the Colorado Springs meetup in March. They're flying me down for it, and and I'll I'll come out to any meetup you, that you want. By the way, if you want me to show up your meetup, all you have to do is pay for my airfare and hotel. Fly me out there. I don't mind. Come out, say hi, shake a few hands, do that sort of stuff. Uh, this one's called "For God's Sakes, Mark." Watch the X Files season eleven, episode two, right now. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. Watch, download the X Files. They 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 dig into some of the conspiracies. I know some of it's just lazy writing, and they're they're jumping into it. But the the new X Files did cover in the intro sequence how uh, the moon missions were faked. Didn't say why. 
they haven't really gotten into flat earth i'm not i'm just not enchanted with the flat with the x-files this time around i mean they shouldn't have brought it back they're they're bringing remember how i said that, that we've run out of novelty they're bringing back television shows which we have been gone for a while like these weird like you can bring back shows like like reunion tours for bands so uh x-files uh, will and grace roseanne um, I, rumor has it that Murphy Brown is coming back. I mean, these shows have been canceled for a long, long time. X Files was gone for a long time, and they bring them back. And I feel bad for. Um, I know that um, Gillian Anderson uh, plays Scully. I feel bad for her because there's something wrong with her voice. I thought it was just a, a an illness thing in the first episode, but there is something going on in her voice. Uh, her throat is not doing well, and it, it's through every episode where. It, it's just, I mean, it sounds like she's like she's coming off of a pneumonia or something. And, and people are online areas like, what the heck? I mean, you can't. Sorry, it's just too distracting. And it doesn't. I mean, honest, there's so many other shows that are better than the X-Files. Now, I mean, X-Files was great in its day. Remember, it was like the first conspiracy mainstream sort of show. The, the dodge that bobbed and weaved a lot. But nowadays, it's like, eh. I mean, literally, I, I think I watched the, the last. I couldn't even make it through the last episode. I, I just couldn't. It was like, yeah, it just isn't doing it. I was just watching it because, oh, it's the X-Files. I got to watch it. So, sorry, guys. It's just not what it used to be. Love David Duchovny. Jillian, where have you been? All right. Uh, moving on. This one's called Lennox Lewis. Lennox. Ooh, it's like a tongue twister. Lennox Lewis, British boxer, may be a flat earther. And there's a picture that goes along with it. Let me open it up real quick. And Lennox Lewis says, how many Flat Earther fans do I have out there? I have a few questions. He wrote that on January 10th. So hopefully people got back to him. Lennox Lewis. I haven't heard anything since then. But yeah, of course, you know, statistics say that there's going to be athletes. There's going to be entertainers. In fact, I wish we had another movie guy or um, uh, a television personality or somebody to, to come out and, and endorse. And what we're really waiting for is people to endorse. So um, B.O.B., when he came out and said, that, oh, yeah, look at Eric DeBay's stuff. Hey, great. Fantastic. At least he mentioned somebody. Kyrie Irving. Love for him to actually mention somebody by name. I don't care if it's Jaronism or Globusters or Carly Sunshine or Patricia or whatever. Moving on. This one's called Survival Guide. Please. Uh, <laughs> and it also says fallen115 hash, uh, hashtag 1895. That's my battle tag if you ever want to play some Warcraft together. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, because you guys don't know. I still have my Warcraft account after 13 years. And my guild, which is only me and a couple of people in it, because most of the people that I ever knew played Horde. I play Alliance Human Paladin. My guild is literally called Flat Earth. So there you go. This one's called Flat Earth Topic. Mark, I'm a huge conspiracy theorist and I'm only 18 years old. Most of you conspiracy theorists are older people, not teenagers, you know. But me, I am obsessed with these kinds of topics for one reason and one reason only. Because I want to know why are humans here who created what is our purpose? Where do we go when we die? Yep, one of the universal questions. Uh, well, that's more than just one reason, but you can get the picture. I've seen tons and tons of conspiracy theories such as JFK, the alien cover-up, 9-11, faking the moon missions, etc. But I've always discounted the Flat Earth conspiracy for obvious reasons, though, such as I've been told all my life by everyone that the earth is round and everywhere you look, the earth is portrayed as round. But since I've watched your video on the Flat Earth topic, there's no... There's no periods here. I'm begging to think there might be something more to the Flat Earth Conspiracy than I thought. I just wanted to tell you that I admire research and I hope you keep going with it. Dot, dot, dot. I hope to get an email back from you. Thanks. I will email Kevin back. That's from Kevin. Kevin's 18 and he's very excited. Although he didn't write in all caps. This one's called Question Mark. I saw something regarding watching an older television series episode last night. It was a flat earth map on the back wall. You could clearly mul you could see clearly multiple times during the episode. I was wondering if you knew about it or would be curious. If so, I can tell you the television show. An episode title, I am sure it's on. Okay, guys, if you're going to send me an email like this, and that's from Brett. I don't mind... 
but don't say I was wondering if you knew about it or would be curious. Just tell me the episode because I get a lot of emails. So don't, don't, don't give me cliffhangers. Don't. It's like, if you, you know, I've got some great information for you, but you've got to email me back or give me a phone call. To, so, you know, it's, that's straight out of the news. You know, it's like, you know, th- three things in your household that can kill you right now. We'll tell you after weather and sports. No, don't do that. Just tell me what it is. Because I'm not going to email you back. Just to, it's like, yeah, please tell me. Look, I get a lot of emails. Sorry. Uh, this one's called Two Flatter Songs for Your Playlist. We meet again, Mark. <laughs> Surprised he didn't do the <laughs> Just listening to your wired digital interview and enjoying your capacity to think on your feet. Also, thanks for the shout out the other night on TFR. That was cool to hear. Well, sir, I have another couple flatter songs for your playlist. This time, George Harrison stopped by for a spot of tea and we made this track. It's a parody of, uh, or it's a takeoff on Here Comes the Sun. The next day, the Dukes of Hazard and Wailing Jennings added a country number to the repertoire. We're going to take a flat ride on the General Lee, but should be back by sundown. We all hope you like it. Waving as we drive off. Flat Earth boys. Thanks again, Mark, and hope to have more songs for you soon. That's from Zane. And yeah, Zane makes a lot of Flat Earth songs, and he sends them to me. And they're, they're covers of other songs, which he create, turns them into Flat Earth songs, which is fantastic. This one's called Flat Earth Arborist, New Hampshire. Hi, Mark. I was just listening to your Flat Earth Clues interview 155 and was reminded of how stubborn people are regarding Flat Earth info and facts. It's sad, really. I was fortunate enough to have a successful conversation with my tattoo artist. This week, it's literally the first time in a while I felt comfortable talking with someone who isn't a member of my family about Flat Earth. It was pretty cool, and unlike most, he kept an open mind. I sent him some links, and he texted me later that evening, blown away. My long-winded point, Mark, is that the responsibility to expose the Flat Earth is literally resting on the shoulders of you and others in the Flat Earth online community. I'm sorry for that, but artists aside, no one I encounter on the day-to-day is interested in having this conversation. I was lucky enough coming, coming it to this, coming it to this, having the expert experience of living in Anchorage, Alaska during my grade school and high school years. I had seen the great distances like Mount McKinley, witnessed the sun during the summer solstice. It made sense to me quicker. Last time I checked this conversation isn't hurting anyone either. I will continue to try, but I think to I'll stick to musicians and artists for a while. Keep up the good work, Mark. I'll try not to bug you often. I know you're a busy guy. I'm not sure what your musical tastes are. I put a link to some of my band's music. Ironically, I la- named my band Flood Watch. <laughs> nice. Years ago. It takes on a whole new meaning these days. Be well, man. Kind regards, David. Uh, and he lists some stuff. And, uh, yeah, my musical taste really varied. Uh, it, it, it comes down to uh, uh, genres. I don't think anyone that, that appreciates music could have like one, like, what's your favorite band? It's like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about rock? Are we talking about rap, country, classical, uh, easy listening, <laughs> stuff like that, uh, soft rock. I mean, there's so many categories. Yeah, I've got my favorites on, on all the categories, but uh, I don't really want to go into it here. I mean, I, there, I don't even know if I have a favorite song. It, it, like anything, it depends on your mood. Do you have a favorite food? Is it food you could eat every day? I suppose there's some food you could, but I mean, you could like pizza, for example, you could eat pretty much every day, just change the toppings, right? But that's kind of a cheat. So it comes out of your mood. Um, You listen to what you're in the mood for. High energy song, mellow song, you know, poppy song, whatever. Uh, This one's called Qantas Flights in Southern Hemisphere. Greetings. I know I've discussed this topic at length and formulated a couple of my own theories. Nevertheless, the news clip is very interesting. See link below. If we have spy planes capable of 4,000 miles an hour, then it's possible that technology could be placed inside a jumbo jet to make it traverse a long ocean in record time, say 12 hours, at a reported speed of only 600 miles an hour. I don't know if the authorities going this direction with the Qantas flights are choosing the Colonel Jessup route, which is the a non-existent one. Either way, a fake globe flight is absolutely doable. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, enough of this topic. I promise this will be my last email regarding it unless someone out there uncovers their method of deception, in which case I'll pass that info along. My next focus is 24-hour daylight in Antarctica. I will email you again soon once I collect my data. Again, pain... 
people to falsify information is always one way for the powers that be to accomplish their goals, whatever the lie may be. Best wishes and stay flat. Regards, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. This one's moving on called Marcus Smith. Nope, nope, no, oh, that's who sent it. This one's called Orb Video. What's going on, Mark? I've been following you on YouTube for some time. I want to share my book with you as well as my orb pictures and video. There's an interesting story on how this orb came to be. This image was captured July 8th, 2017 in my backyard. There's an orb video and other stuff. So, okay, thanks for that. I will check that out when I get a chance. This one's called Siri. Mark, what do you think? Authentic. I found on Facebook on my feed. Uh, Clint from Saskatoon. It's four megs. Uh, maybe. I, I don't want to get into it now. Maybe. Clint sends me a lot of emails. This one's called Visuals Perspective. Uh, Mark, ship mast first appears, ship hill first hull first disappears he spelled hole like hill youtube video explains please help me find but you may know thanks matthew uh there's a lot of videos out there just type in flat earth ship or flat earth boat and you'll see a ton of video on boats that should not be there on the horizon this one's called a big Hello from this point of Earth. Hello, Mark. I'm about to complete the series of videos that you have made about Flat Earth Clues, and I really would like to discuss with you something. I just want to make sure that you are still reachable through this email. I appreciate your work. Thank you very much. Rami. Rami. R-E-M-Y. How do you pronounce that? And that's all I'm going to read there. This one's called Light. Hello, Mark. Been listening to the show's good work. Just a question to ponder. Why can we see the sun at 93 million miles? The light, yes, but the body of the sun? I was an entertainer in my youth and worked in spotlight and park hands. When in very low light, no light conditions or like space, such as nighttime outdoor conditions or an, out, or an indoor venue. While performing, I could never see the light source. The light, yes, and the warmth, but not the source. By source, I mean the actual element, not the perceived location of the light source. Just something I was thinking about. P.S. I would like your notes on readiness. Thanks, Henry. Wow, that's the first time everyone's ever said that. He said the survival manual. His, my notes on readiness. All right. I'll have to send it to him. This one's called Flatter Theory. Mark, I've just spent hours watching your documentaries and you are a very entertaining person. Yes, indeed, I'll give you that much. But that's all it is, entertaining. I've seen for myself the curvature of the earth being a pilot who has had the opportunity to fly at flight levels above 40,000 feet. So I guess I imagine seeing that, right? <laughs> yes. I don't think so. For whatever it's worth, I'm not going to disparage you or your views. I'll just stick to what I had said earlier. And that is, you are very entertaining <laughs> normally. And I've had emails like that before. And when people send me those, I send them the list of subject matter experts, the testimony shows on flat earth. And I just type in two words, opinions vary with a whole bunch of links to pilots who have come on and said, Nope, there's no curve. You think you see the curve. And so, and, and like this guy, for example, he says, no, no, there's a curve. Fine. Send me a picture. You're a pilot. You take a picture at 40,000 feet. Great. You're in the cockpit. Take a picture of the curve. Send it to me. I put that challenge out there a couple years ago now. I said, if you see the curve, I don't care where you see it. Mountaintop. Some people still say they see curve from the beach. And that's hilarious, by the way. There's all sorts of people. That, that it's in layers where people will say, oh, no, I've seen the curvature of the beach. And the other people say, no, you can't see it from the beach. I, you can see it from a mountaintop. And pilots say, no, you can't see it from a mountaintop. You have to see it from 30,000 feet. And nobody has sent me a picture that actually shows the curvature. Nobody. If you can send me a picture of the curvature from wherever you're standing. And again, the pictures, you, you pull it up in your laptop or whatever, and you, you'll see it. It's there. I'll quit flat earth. Send it to me. Never happens. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I see you have not responded to my emails. That shows that you are a phony. So my question is, why are you peddling this Flat Earth nonsense? And that's from Charles Holloway. Uh, yeah. yeah. There are some trolls I don't respond to, and that's one of them. The emails like that I don't respond to. I'd like to do like a snappy comeback, but eh. 
Uh, let's see if there's any more here. Let's see if we can end on this one. Maybe this one is this one fun enough. Yeah, this one's okay. This one probably be fun. This maybe we'll end on this one. It's called Equatorial Proofs. Mark, maybe it's because I'm relatively new to flat Earth, and maybe this has been thought of or done. I was thinking that on a globe, if one were to start at a point on or near the equator, like Berlin, South America, or sail or fly along the 45th degree of latitude then one would need no course correction at all to keep a plane on that latitude and little course correction on a ship, maybe some for currents. The point is on a flat AE map, one would need to be making a continual left-hand turn while, while traveling west to east. Take Elon and all the gang, put them in a ship or plane along with yourself, Jaron and others, and keep your eye uh, one on the pilot and autopilot for any continuous turn. Would not this not be game over for the globe, or would they try to find a way to debunk, or has this been done already? Uh, if you have, a, have any podcasts citing equatorial proofs, please send me a link. It's never been tried. Why not go for it? Well, mostly because of money. That's from Tim. Uh, mostly because of money. It's because you got to get a plane, you know, a private plane or chart, some sort of thing that'll fly around the world. And it's still the, it, it's not going to be the, the, the nail in the coffin for the globe. It's just not because remember on a flat world, the compass still works the same way. The difference is that it points, everything points towards the, the, the center of the North pole and nothing towards the South pole. So eh, do I want to end on that one? I may have to because we're running out of time here. And all right, let's end on this one. Okay, one more bonus, bonus email. Digital artist and fellow flat earther. That's the title of it. Hi, Mark. I enjoy listening to your show and I especially appreciate your openness to people of all perspectives. My name is Davey Maxwell. I'm a professional digital artist with experience working on television shows such as the Weather Channel's Why Planes Crash. I was responsible for animating and compositing photorealistic renders of planes flying over the earth. I also have a master's degree in theology. I've lived on three continents and I believe we live on a flat earth, but here's where things get tricky. My girlfriend worked for NASA at Goddard Flight Space Center and was a science teacher for many years. Furthermore, my housemate is currently working on developing a system for the ISS at the Colorado, Inst uh, Colorado School of Mines. And my best friend's father was an astronaut. As you can imagine, upon discovering the truth about my world, I found myself surrounded by a lot of resistance. I am very interested in lending my insight to the Fly Earth community, especially in the area of digital art and visual effects. I have often thought about starting my own YouTube channel with a focus on digital art and the rain image manipulation surrounding the Earth. I would love to chat with you sometime about getting something like that started, what that looked like for you, and the pro tips in general. Let me know if we can arrange a time to talk. I would greatly appreciate it. All the best. Keep it real. Keep it flat. Davey Maxwell. And you can check out his thing at Davey3D.com. D-A-V-Y-3-D.com. And yeah, absolutely start up your own channel. Again, the, the Flat Earth community has covers such a wide range of, of demographics and skill sets. That'd be great. It'll, every digital guy that I've talked to, any guy that, that deals with a lot with graphics, they'll say the same thing. It's like, oh yeah, you can do amazing stuff with graphics. You can fake just about anything. I mean, for God's sakes, Photoshop changed the legitimacy of the internet. Because you can Photoshop anything to anything. Look at Facebook, for God's sakes. Anyway, let's end on that. That's fairly light. So uh, remember, guys, if you want to email me your questions, you can send them to msargent23 at comcast.net. And I will try to answer them. But until next time, stay flat.